Good afternoon, Central Coast. This is Jamie Umfenauer in the KPRL Sound Off Studios. Now, we are happy to welcome our first guest today, Roman Slavinsky, and he's a former uh, seventh and eighth grade science teacher who bravely taught in the LA Unified School District, and he is the founder of A Plus Tutoring. And Roman, we are so glad to have you on our show today because we school just started around here and a lot of people have concerns about learning loss so we thought we would ask you about this since you are definitely an expert yes jamie thank you so much for having me and i'd love to talk about some of the things that we can do to help your listeners and their students and their kids well you know in california specifically um this is actually the first school year in which the kids started school or having a normal school year right now so far it was kind of normal no masks all that kind of stuff where you can actually see people's faces um you know they had we've had two years of of insane lockdowns and an abrupt shift to our online learning in which most teachers were not prepared to do that at all. Not that online learning can't work if you are trained and proficient in that. But um, was there any issues, Roman, before the lockdowns where we were starting to see learning loss in kids or they were falling behind? Or is this something specific to the um, the lockdown effects on our, on our education system? I would say that our educational system in California wasn't top performing pre-pandemic, but the pandemic has only made it worse. Um, A lot of people, I'm saying this from personal experience, Common Core did not help a lot of kids as far as learning goes because it didn't, the methodology wasn't jiving with children with, a you know, it's for a certain type of brain uh, wiring. Um, you know, with that switch in education pre-pandemic, did that have any effects as well? Absolutely. Anytime that there's a shift in standards and expectations for a grade, there's a huge change that happens for students and for the teachers that, like you said, have to be trained and proficient in what they're teaching and how they're teaching. Yeah. And, and the whole different methodology, especially I'm thinking math specifically, was completely undone. Yeah. And and I know as as a parent who ended up homeschooling because uh, partially because of common core math, um you know, it was it it really threw a monkey wrench in education and in that style of learning or teaching uh didn't jive with a lot of kids. Absolutely. Common core was a very different approach at numbers and how kids view them and it's very it goes it's not the common sense approach that a lot of times we apply with elementary school math when dealing with addition and subtraction so it totally changed the way that the information was presented and how we wanted kids to process it which made a lot of kids not able and not prepared to be able to accomplish the grade level expectation Mm -hmm. and as we fast forward to the lockdown um and and that abrupt shift to online learning and and uh all of that from your vantage point roman what did you see that kind of unraveled things with learning with the kids i saw that the lack of interaction and group work and learning from peers really made kids have a lot of confidence issues and social and emotional concerns they came up with not being able to see how others are doing and to collaborate with them mm-hmm. mixed in with the fact that the instruction wasn't always clear Imagine a teacher was teaching to a class where there's 30 Zoom windows and only five of them have the camera turned on. It just didn't create an environment that was conducive to learning. Very true. When the kids went back into the classrooms um, last year and they were still, you know, all being forced to be masked and separated, did that play part in learning loss as well? Absolutely, because a lot of the time in the classroom was spent on making sure that there's the distances, the kids can't interact with each other. Teachers weren't able to do the same activities that they would typically do. And then what about, um, and especially maybe at the younger grades, uh, with reading and, and those verbal skills and everything, if you're covering the mouth either for a student being able to read the teacher um, or, you know, just trying to communicate clearly, did that set a lot of the, especially our younger students, back in in their development? Those are the ones that were most severely affected by it because they couldn't read the lips when their teacher's teaching them phonics. Mm -hmm. They couldn't read body language effectively to understand social cues. Now, what about the older kids? Um, you know, 
<laughs> I guess half of it was about rebellious kids just forcing them to keep them on. Um, but when we look at the high school kids, what they went through with the lockdown in particular, um, what happened? I mean, did the, did the schools just lose track of a lot of kids, especially in high school? I think it's a combination of losing track and a lot of kids slipping through the crack. And due to the fact that it was learning under the pandemic situation, a lot of times assignments that were assigned weren't as rigorous as they would have been if it was in a classroom setting. And a lot of school districts had plans in place that kids couldn't fail a class. Mm. So kids were passing classes that they weren't necessarily deserving of a passing grade. I forgot that they had changed the rules on grading through this as well. Um, That basically, like you said, you can fail a student. Um, And it was obviously for kids this was an extraordinary circumstance to just like not be allowed to go to school um but then you know for the kids that were just starting high school um i was with a young lady a couple days ago that's a senior right now so i believe the lockdown when did it start it would have started her freshman year yeah it would have i believe it started her freshman year and so she hasn't had any normal high school experience until this year so yeah, and that's how, how, does that play, how does that play into a developing teenager and their educational experience? It has a huge effect, and we're only going to start seeing it as these kids start going into college and what their college experience is going to be like. Because for a lot of these kids, they did not have any opportunity to join clubs, did not have opportunity for extracurriculars. Mm. And these are the things that we really want kids to develop in school. It's not just the good grades, but developing into being a good person and knowing what it's like to be involved with things, showing leadership. That's a really good point, because especially if you're trying to get into universities right away, the the clubs and the extracurriculars really pay a, play a big part in that application. Absolutely. I didn't even think of that part, Roman. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> just the grade part alone. And some kids did fine on the on the online learning and the disrupted learning, but other kids really, really suffered. But what, ha- what have we seen now for students? Um, are they wanting to even go to college? I know a ton of kids who just, they tried it and they gave it, you know, the thumb and said, see you later. I'm, I'm going to figure out something else besides college or a lot of them just decided not to go um what are what are the what's the actual facts about that so we are seeing dips on a national level of students that were in high school during the pandemic of attending the university four-year universities we're also seeing lots of trends of kids not knowing what they want from college because of the fact that they were locked up during the pandemic and didn't have a chance to discover themselves. Mm. So what we're noticing as a shift on the state level is lots of school districts have dual enrollment programs where a student can concurrently take community college classes while in high school to kind of start bridging the gap to be ready for college when they graduate. Do you think, though, even with that dual enrollment, which I know in, in the districts up here that they have that, um, but even during the pandemic and still a lot of the class, it's all it's all online. So they're like still missing that actual college classroom experience, because I know when I went to junior college, um, it was really awesome in a lot of the classes that I went because it was in that classroom setting. Um and, and and the kids are missing that in college now. They're completely missing that. But my firm belief is that there will we'll see that online classes are going to be much harder for kids to get through as opposed to in-person classes mm-hmm. because there's just going to be so much work that's assigned to them as opposed to different kinds of assignments that can happen in a real-world situation where you're working with peers. Yeah, and, and they've lost all that real-world type of situation. Absolutely. And that's huge. Um, so as far as, you know, what, now you have A plus tutoring, um, down in Southern California. And so when you're working with students now that, that are coming forward, especially maybe juniors and seniors in high school, where are you seeing the biggest struggle or the biggest gap of learning over the last uh, couple years that you're having to come up with plans to overcome? So the first one is college level math readiness. And we're talking Whether like they the took, higher level like calculus and stats? Well, it's being able to handle a college algebra class, which is the equivalent of a pre-calc in high school, and then calculus as well and statistics. So were more students not taking those classes in high school the last few years? They were taking them. They just weren't retaining any knowledge from them. Okay. So it wasn't the fact that they 
didn't progress through the steps of the courses, but it just, the online learning set them back and they just, it didn't mean it. Yeah. It didn't sink in. Yeah, they need more of a review before starting their first semester, first semester college math class and then just jumping right in from high school. And was that true even prior to the lockdowns that that there was a, a gap in math readiness for kids going into college? There was, and now it's even worse. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that is that is really not good. So is it better to even maybe repeat a previous course just to rebuild the foundation? Well, that's where online learning comes in and can be beneficial. So if you have the right program that you're trying to run to get the specific skills that you're looking for, you can have students implement it online with the help and support of like a tutor so that the key concepts that are vital to be successful, let's say in middle school math, it's fractions, decimals, and percents. Mm-hmm. If you can get those three things down, you'll be able to solve the majority of the problems in school. Very true. It all comes down to those basic, basic fundamentals of math. And and that's where we're missing the boat. We are. Yeah. So what can a parent do as far as the mathematics side of things? Should they, um, you know, look at private tutoring? Should they go talk to the math teacher? Um, what can, what options does a parent have if, if their child is, is lacking in some of those fundamental math skills? So our approach to it is to always pause and to first talk to the student to really understand. Let's talk about math the last three years, all the years that are impacting the pandemic. What were the grades? What do you feel were the takeaways from it? Then talking to the teacher that's this year's current teacher. Explain the plan. Like our plan is for Johnny to go to a four-year university, and right now Johnny's interested in possibly looking at something STEM-related. He's going to need more math classes. Getting the advice of the teacher, then getting them sitting down with the student and creating a plan. We have diagnostic assessments available on our website, wetutoratome.com, which are free for parents for all grade ages. But you can also go into websites such as Khan Academy or really Googling the specific class that you're looking for. To find the concept and then you sit down with your child and you ask them to identify the right way that they think that they would study and approach this. Okay, and we're gonna when take you do this. We're gonna take a real quick break, Roman, and we'll be right back with Roman Slavinsky, education expert and founder of A Plus Tutoring. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with Roman. And we are back with Roman Slavinsky, and he is the founder of A-Plus Tutoring and Private Learning Expert. And he is also a former uh, science teacher, junior high science teacher from L.A. Unified School District. I'm sure, I, I know around here we have reported on a lot of stories of L.A. Unified School District, your former employer. And and the way they've handled all the, the crazy lockdown has um, just been pretty appalling. And then I guess they they have a half a million students unaccounted for so far this school year. And I mean, that's going to break your heart as an educator, Roman, to see just these kids that were maltreated and then just slip through the system. Definitely. It's heartbreaking. Half a million kids, that's a humongous amount of kids that are unaccounted for. And it affects even the kids that show up to school because when the teachers are planning, they are seeing that there's absences in class. And sometimes they're holding off on assignments, waiting for a kid to show up. And there's nobody showing up. Mm. So it's just a shame all around. It it truly is. um, and and we need more good teachers and, you know, people that just want to teach kids honest to goodness education. Um, you know, we talked a bit about mathematics and obviously that is um, a very important part of education. But what about language arts? Did you see learning gaps and an increased need in tutoring for the language arts, whether, you know, writing and, and especially essay writing, things like that? Absolutely. So in the secondary grades, we saw that a lot of kids were having a hard time writing writing narrative essays, talking about things that they have read and really providing critical thinking. They're, what they've been assigned readings during the pandemic, they just kind of feast through them, reading but not for comprehension, and don't really know the mechanisms that should be in place when reading, stopping, and thinking about what they read, because they know that there's a writing assignment tied to it. That's very true. Very true. And, and they're missing out maybe on those deeper discussions that happened normally, um, you know, in that classroom setting, that group setting. Uh, you could do a little bit on Zoom, but it's it's not the same when you're dealing with all the distractions of Zoom. Um, and, and as we get older, our writing skills become very important. Absolutely. 
writing skills, being able to express yourself in a concise and effective way without rambling and to express your thoughts is something that's vital for any well-functioning adult in society. And a lot of the times our kids are having a hard time doing that coming out of high school. Very true. I think they all think it's just tweets and like social media posting with little short words. It's not how it works. It's not all hashtags. No, it is not all hashtags in the real world out there. Now, you you come from a science background. Obviously, there's math deeply tied into science. Um, what happened with um, the sciences, whether it be physical or uh, life science? Uh, did a lot of those type of classes, even history class, um, do we see students struggling in those subjects or is it mostly in, you know, the mathematics and the language arts? So the mathematics and language arts are things that are evaluated more frequently by districts, while social sciences and the sciences get evaluated with more of an interval, like LA Unified tests for science in fifth and eighth grade. So we've noticed that with science, a lot of the fun inquiry-based learning that's usually part of labs has become missing. And it's cool to watch a video of something exploding, but it's way cooler to make something explode on your own. Very you can true. watch a time-lapse video of a plant growing, or you can plant your own seedlings and watch them grow. And it's always more fun to blow things up in a classroom. <laughs> it, is, it is just, that's how you keep kids engaged is by physically having them do things. Exactly. It has to be a fun experience. Yes. And so when, in tutoring, I guess a lot of people think that it's just boring, you know, just, it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation of, of boring school. But is there ways even to make math fun when tutoring or even helping our child at home? Absolutely. All we have to do is just be a little bit creative with the kinds of situations that we explain to our child of where that math is used. Anytime something can be relevant, it makes the learning so much easier. Such if we're talking effect. to a child about drawing an equation where two lines cross, we can bring it out of a situation where we use chopsticks because we know that they enjoy to eat sushi. It's all about just simple things that you can do to really give them a memorable experience so it's not just asking them to robotically remember what you said. Love Seeing that. something that can be related to it. Love that. Make it more of real life because I'm sure you hear a lot from students, when am I ever going to use this? Exactly. And sometimes... Once in a while, algebra does pop up in real life. Absolutely. As long as you just know when to when it is showing up to identify it. But there's multiple everyday situations where kids are solving equations, even when they're figuring out how much time is left in the school day. <laughs> there we go. That's the, that's their number one equation is how many more minutes do I have till I get to go home? Now, you said there's some assessments that parents can look at at your website, Roman. What is that website? So the website is wetutoratthome.com. Easy enough. Thank you so much, Roman. And thank you for, for being so blunt and sharing with us the truth of what's really happening with our kids' education. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you.